adding symbols and descriptions to ladder logic. You can see we have two rungs of logic here, rung zero and rung one. There are no descriptions or symbols. There are no man readable uh, comments displayed here. This typically happens when you need to work on a machine that has a PLC with a program in it that you do not have an offline copy on your hard drive or to open up into memory. All the main readables, all the text that is unique to a program, such as the symbols, descriptions, page titles, and run comments, never get downloaded to the PLC. They only reside either stored on your hard drive or opened up in RAM. So if you do go out and connect to a PLC on a machine to troubleshoot it and you do not have an offline project for that PLC's program, you will have to create a new offline project and then upload the logic into the offline project to view it. Even when you go online, you're still looking at the offline project but you have basically animated the state of the memory locations displayed in the ladder logic on the screen. So if this is the case, and you do not have any similar symbols or descriptions, you will have to reverse engineering, you will have to reverse engineer the descriptions and, descriptions and symbols. The first rung, all of the memory locations addressed by the instructions are IO type memory locations. These are easy to determine a description or a symbol. If you have a print, electrical print, you simply go to that IO module and look to see what description was put on that memory location, such as output colon 0.0 size .0, 0. Um, if you don't have a print, this is the worst case, no print and no offline project, you will have to go to the I.O. module, trace out the wiring to see what kind of a device, output device, that it's connected to. So let's say it was connected to a um, pneumatic valve bank, and it's a single solenoid spring return, and then you trace the plumbing from the valve to a cylinder, and you figure out what the cylinder does. So you would then right click on the memory location, O colon 0, .0 size 0, go down to, and you can click edit symbol or edit description. You're still going to come up with the same pop up. So we'll type in um, extend clamping cylinder. solenoid. And I tend to keep my descriptions and symbols as narrow as possible to uh, keep try to keep them more narrow than the actual instructions. Otherwise it, it stretches out the width of the rung and causes it to wrap or not to be fully displayable on your screen. So we'll put in ext for extend and C L M P for clamp and S O L. Now notice that I have a mixture here of lowercase and uppercase. Well, it isn't going to matter because as soon as I click OK, symbols are always entirely uppercase characters. Now that's using up almost the entire width that's available. See, we have seven. Oh, that's only 10 characters. We can go 20 characters wide with the descriptions and the symbols. Notice that whatever I attached to describe or symbolize that memory location, it shows up in the program in, in, on any instruction where that memory location is addressed. So we check a little further and we find that this address is, and I'm just going to put in a symbol, uh,
extend clamp push button. I think I'll put a, a, a uh, space in there to make it a little bit more readable. Actually, I want that to be retract. So see, I can go back and edit that symbol by just double clicking on it and then dragging the cursor across the letters I want to change. So I'll put in R E because that's the retract clamp push button and this is the extend. Notice that when I selected symbol instead of description, I'll do that over again. Right click, edit. If I click edit description, I get this whole window. If I click edit symbol, it allows me to just enter in the symbol without having access to both the description and the symbol. So I'll put an extend clamp space push button. Okay, now we have a completely annotated rung. We could type in a description here that's a little bit more, or I should say less abbreviated. But for the sake of this instruction, we're showing you the technique, not actually a complete application. Now this rung was easy to reverse engineer because you could go to the print or go to the machine and ha you have something physical. This next rung, however, is going to be a little more difficult. But first, you can see that the rung is wrapped here. I want to get rid of that by dragging, grabbing the edge of the ladder view and dragging it until it's not wrapped. Also, I'm going to drag it over far enough to where I don't completely block off the project view. That way I can click on what's left of the project view and bring it into focus if I need to select something. Okay, I'm also going to scroll down a little bit so you can see the whole rung. Now, what used up some of our vertical space was the height of this description. So if I made it much wider, then the rung would be wider. If I make, if I use all five lines, I used four here, but you can see the more lines you use for your description, the more it's going to spread out the logic on your screen vertically. So if I went back and edited this, and since EXT is probably good enough, Notice that now both rungs easily fit in the screen. That's something to keep in mind. Also, you can turn them off to give you more vertical space once you're familiar with the logic. So I'm going to right click in an empty area, properties, and see under comment display, we have check show page titles, rung numbers, rung comments, descriptions, and symbols. I can turn off symbols and see the symbol is gone. Now I can turn off the descriptions. They're gone as well. Typically, if you use really good symbols, then you're only using up one additional line of, of vertical space per rung of logic. Now, if you've got a rung like this one that has two levels, each level is going to use up one line. Well, we'll turn everything back on. Now this rung of logic, because all of the memory locations addressed by these instructions are internal bits in memory and do not represent anything external such as I.O., referring to a print or going to the machine won't give you any hint at all about what this logic does. This rung is controlled by B3 1 slash 2, which is going to be controlled by other rungs of logic or from something such as a panel view, an operator interface terminal. This memory location right here could be controlled by a touch screen. This memory location here, B32 slash 13, could be controlling 
a multi-state indicator on an operator interface terminal as well. So this entire rung of logic could begin with an operator interface terminal and control something on an operator interface terminal. However, we're going to deduce that T4 colon 0 um, is monitoring the elapsed time for the extension of the clamp cylinder. Okay, so we'll just type in um, to monitor the clamp extension. Uh, we don't need to put in a symbol, but you could add one. Now, notice here, this description symbol, once it was entered into the program, appears every place that that memory location is addressed. A timer data type has three words, accumulate, preset, and then the control bits. So any place where the control bit is used or the accumulate or preset are addressed by an instruction, you'll see that the description follows it. Now, let's go a little bit further here. And I'm going to right click anywhere in this gray area. And I'm going to go to edit comment. And I'm going to say that this rung, I'm going to make a comment about this rung. And I'm also going to add a page title to this rung. Notice that the page title is different than the rung comment. We'll add a rung comment to this one. but no page title. Now I want to point out something else here. If we go to Tools, Options, and then look at Advanced Diagnostics, this box is checked. I'm going to uncheck that box temporarily and then go back and I want you to notice something. Notice that next to the ladder programs here, ladder 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that there are no plus signs here. There's nothing to expand. If I go back into Tools, Options, check that box, and apply, notice that there's a plus sign now next to the main program. And when I expand, it shows the page title. Now to further emphasize that, I'm going to copy I'm going to select rung 0, then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select rung 1. The shift and control keys work in RS Logics 500 the same as they work in a word processor. If you use shift after you select one, shift, and then select another one, it selects those two and everything in between. If you use the control key, it only selects the first one and the second one that you clicked on, or any others that you click on. In other words, it will skip everything in between. So I selected both rung zero and rung one. I'm going to do a control C, that copies it, to the clipboard. Click on the end there, and then I'm going to do a control V, and that inserts a copy of the first two rungs. Now I have rungs two and three, which are copies of rungs zero and one. I'm gonna go down here, and I'm going to edit this address by double clicking, clicking behind the zero, backspace one, enter. Now I can drag this address over here, and I will change these addresses as well by double-clicking, clicking behind the zero, 
backspace, put in a unique address. So this rung, although it's identical to rung zero, the memory locations addressed by the instructions are no longer identical. And you'll see that there's no longer a page title or a rung comment. So, I've changed all the addresses to be unique from the first two rungs. Now I'm going to go up here to rung 2, which is identical to rung 0. Right click, edit comment, and we'll type in something. What we type in here is not important, other than you see the technique. Okay, so let's say that we, instead of two cylinders, we got the clamp cylinder and cylinder two. <clears throat> let's say we had 20 cylinders and they were all in this ladder file two. And we put a page title at the beginning of each section of logic <clears throat> for each cylinder. Now when we go to ladder two, we hit the plus sign, it shows us all the page titles. And if I click on one, it takes me right to that section of logic. So you can see that using page titles further divide up ladder files into multiple sections for easy access for troubleshooting. Also, if we click in an empty area, go to properties, you can change the font. I typically use terminal because it reminds me of a previous version of software that I like the looks of. So it's strictly your preference. <clears throat> I will advise you, though, if you pick some of these, you can dig a hole where you'll have a lot of trouble with the what I call the geezer buttons. And the geezer buttons are the make it bigger, make it smaller buttons up here. So if you have trouble <clears throat> reading the logic, you can, you can always make it larger with the plus sign, smaller the minus sign. Now notice that clicking here, I click twice to get a change. So you know, I'm getting, not getting any change until I click three times. Um, not all the fonts respond perfectly in the conventional way to the, what I call the geezer buttons. All Windows software has geezer buttons. Geezer meaning 40 or over, and maybe your eyes aren't quite what they used to be. Another thing I'd like to point out is if you get the view all jammed up here and you, you don't like what's happened to it, and you want to restore it, go to Window, click, Arrange, click. Default project is already selected. Just hit OK and voila. Everything's right back the way it started. 